Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to this Thursday edition of Thoroughbred Action here from Gulfstream Park. Jason Blewett joining you from the Jockey Silks Room here. Many colors around, and you know what? You've come to the right place because the show's in high def. It's going to look great over the next half hour or so because we've got nine races to bring you on the show tonight. We've also got the voice of the one and only track announcer of Gulfstream Park, Pete Aiello, who's coming up with the weather and track conditions. We start the Thursday program with a fast main track, a firm turf course. It was a bit of a cloudy day and a bit warm, but otherwise pretty good. The track is fast, the turf is firm, and the first of the day over the turf at five furlongs. Maiden claimers in for $25,000. Scratch the three and six. The favorites were two, Particularity, and seven, Kid Cantharos. Racing at Gulfstream. Good start from the center for 40 hits who blast to the front from the outside. Jingle Bells is away in second. Down at the rail, Don Fager is third. Kid Cantharos is out of there second last. And Particularity is last. So the favorites are at the back of the field as they race to the far turn. Long shot, 40 hits, has the lead from Jingle Bells, who's on the press in second. Three wide, Kid Cantharos is third. Don Fager is fourth. And Particularity, the gray, starts to get underway from the back, separated by four and a half with three furlongs left to run. With the advantage, it's 40 hits, tackling his jingle bells on the outside. Kid Cantharos given the green light by Miguel Vasquez to try to make some ground. The debut runner, Don Fager, is toward the rail, and Particularity is winding it up from the back under Marcos Manessis with a quarter of a mile left to go. Off the turn and the stretch drive, Jingle Bells comes away with the lead. 40 hits, battles back second, Particularity on the outside, Don Fager up the inside. Kid Cantharos did not go on, but Particularity way out in the center is going to go last to first to win. Particularity three to five and long gone. Up second was Don Fager, up third was Jingle Bells, then Kit Can Tharrelson, 40 hits. Two key contenders in today's first race. One of them was the winner, the other was no good. It was Particularity who was the winner, rallying from off the speed to break the maiden under jockey Marcos Manessis for trainer Juan Carlos Abario and owners Costa Brava. Second number one, Don Fager ahead of number five, Jingle Bells, who was third in his comeback try. To the second race, Phillies and Mares race one mile over the main track. Claimers in for $6,250. Scratch the one, Vicky Queen. Favorites included three, White Moon, and four, Up the Road. And they're off. Nadia's image broke to the outside. Good start for Up the Road. Diana's comprise had speed, and rushing between horses, White Moon wants to mix it up. So the two favorites, White Moon and Up the Road, go at it. Diana's comprise toward the rail. Up on the outside is Nadia's image, and far back to Troya. They exit the one-mile shoot now and race to the three-quarter pole. And with the advantage, it's White Moon not by a half a length. On the outside, that's Nadia's image second. Diana's comprise is third. Up the road follows along and now improves a touch to be a joint third. And still five or six to Troya. Quarter time, 24 and four as they head to the half-mile point. Up front, it's White Moon in front by a half a length. Nadia's image keeps the pressure on second. Up the road is third, four lengths off the lead. Down at the rail, that's Diana's comprise, and the trailer is Troya. They move past the half-mile point, leave the backstretch, and move on to the far turn. They went 48 seconds for that opening half-mile speed. It's White Moon who holds the inside edge and the lead. On the outside, Nadia's image trying to stay in range. Second, three back to Diana's comprise. Gutierrez getting after the second choice up the road to try to make some ground. She's back to fourth, and the trailer remains Troya, and the leader remains White Moon. White Moon now to the final quarter of a mile has the lead. Diana's comprise into the clear and charging hard now second. Back to third is Nadia's image toward the rail and up the road. Three sixteenths to go, three quarters. One twelve and three. There's an eighth of a mile left to go. Diana's comprise runs at the leader, White Moon, and now Diana's comprise is the leader. White Moon is back to second. Well clear of the others, but it will be Diana's comprise coming clear. Diana's comprise and Jose Sanchez win by two in the end. White Moon was second, well clear of up the road, third, then Nadia's image. Well, it's been a long time between drinks, but give it to Diana's comprise in today's second race. She ran super last time out, takes another step forward here today, and gets that elusive third victory for trainer Barry Rose at Rose Family Stable. Jose Sanchez on board for the winning ride. Second, number three, White Moon ahead of the four up the road, who ran third. Time for a commercial break. When we come back, the Thursday card rolls on. Don't go away.
We're back now for the third race of the afternoon on the turf at a mile and a 16th. Maiden claimers in for 12,500. A field of eight signed on. The favorite was number five, Salsa Jack. And they're off. He's a leader, hopped in the air at the start. Good start for Warpipe on the outside, who moves to the early lead. There goes Salsa Jack, put into play early. He's a leader, is taken in hand with 10 Downing Street just to his inside. Then Mars Capone working ahead of Unbridled Coyote and Grand Network. And the early trailer is bold as a lion. Up front, Gaff Leone and Salsa Jack cut the corner and establish the lead over Warpipe, who's racing in second. 10 Downing Street is third. He's a leader, is back to fourth. And it's a gap of two to Mars Capone. Settled fifth for Chamafi in the blue, about five and a half off the lead. Grand Network follows him. He's in the two path, a length and a half better than Unbridled Coyote. And Bold as a Lion remains the back marker through the opening quarter mile in 24 seconds flat. The race down the back stretch with Salsa Jack in front. Salsa Jack leads the way. He's comfortable and a length and a half better than Warpipe second. 10 Downing Street is third. He's a leader on the outside is now fourth from Grand Network and Mars Capone. Then at the back are Bold as a Lion and Unbridled Coyote. 48 and two for the opening half mile speed. Salsa Jack just continues to roll along up front. He leads by two. Now into second is 10 Downing Street. This will be the matchup with Warpipe racing in third. He's a leader fourth and trying to run home a bit. Then Mars Capone and Grand Network ahead of Bold as a Lion. And the back marker is still unbridled Coyote. And Salsa Jack continues to travel well. Salsa Jack has the lead. 10 Downing Street put into the clear by Juarez to try to get after him. But then Tyler chirped at Salsa Jack who maintains a sizable lead. Back to second, he's a leader. Mars Capone's in traffic from the outside in Grand Network with 316s to go. Salsa Jack still finding. He's still five on top. From between horses, Mars Capone getting loose to try to get into second, but no way can he catch Salsa Jack. Salsa Jack well rationed up front and a gate to wire winner. Mars Capone up for second, Grand Network third. He's a leader, finish fourth. Number five, Salsa Jack makes it look easy as he secures the lead, the rail, and a gate to wire victory under jockey Tyler Gaffleone. Class drop and the return to South Florida did the son of two steps also good as he breaks the maiden for Jonathan Thomas in the Southwest Stable. Second, number four, Mars Capone ahead of the two Grand Network, who ran third. To the fourth race now, maiden claimers at five and a half furlongs, lead off leg of today's Rainbow Six. These are Phillies and Mares in for $10,000. Field of eight signed on. The favorites included one, Sold at Sugar, and four, Kitty and Hill. And they're off. From the rail, sold that sugar, blast out to take the lead. Bonsai Benny has some speed. Three wide and Kitty and Hill moving up. Out of their fourth is Elegante. Then comes All Run, No Play. Ahead of Here Comes the Ghost. Candy Sue is toward the rail, and the early trailer is Quana. Down the back stretch they go, and with the advantage, sold that sugar in front by a neck for Ramsey. On the outside, Kitty and Hill second. Elegante runs on third, Bonsai Benny toward the rail fourth. Here comes the ghost is very wide with Candy Sue and all run no play, and the trailer remains Quena. Around the far turn, they went 23 seconds for the opening quarter speed. Sold, that sugar in front by a neck. Kitty and Hill on the outside is second. Here comes the ghost, still wide while gaining ground third. Bonsai Benny gets a crack of the crop fourth and toward the rail. Then Elegante, and they're at the top of the stretch. Ramsey sits chilly on sold out sugar, cuts the corner with the lead. Kitty and Hill is still second. Bonsai Benny is still third. Here comes the ghost, is still fourth with less than an eighth of a mile to go. Sold out sugar, finding plenty. Sold out sugar is a gate to wire winner under jockey Romero Ramsey. Kitty and Hill with a good try second, Bonsai Benny third. Favorites run 1-2 in today's fourth race with number one sold at Sugar freshened up off a try last time out against much better competition. So the drop in class does this daughter of sold at good. She gets a maiden breaking score under Romero Ramsey for Joe Orsino and the North Wind Thoroughbreds. Second four, Kitty and Hill. Third was the two, Bonsai Benny. We move now to the fifth race of the day, the start of the late pick five. We're on the turf at about seven and a half furlongs. Claimers in for a price tag at $16,000. Scratch the six and the nine, the field of seven. The favorite was the eight, Gregory Sun. And they're off. Hot and heavy away well. Lucky Kitten has some speed, but hot and heavy sharp early and will take the lead in the run to the first turn. Lucky Kitten is second toward the rail. That's the veteran Perfect Tay third from the outside and Gregory Sun fourth. An extreme justice racing ahead of Zitman and at the back of the field is Smart Return. They charge around the first turn, chasing the sharp speed of Hot and Heavy and Romero Ramsey in front by a length and a half. Lucky Kitten is second. Toward the inside, it's Perfect Tay to the two path and Gregory Sun. Then it's a length and a half back to Zitman. He settled fifth in the two path, about five lengths off the lead. 
Extreme Justice the Gray is second last for Camacho, and the trailer is Smart Return. Opening quarter, 23 and four, hot and heavy, throwing all the right numbers right now. He leads the way by three. Lucky Kitten is second, still four to Gregory Sun third. Perfect Tay is back to fourth. Extreme Justice gets started. That sends Zitman three wide. Smart return at the back of the field as Hot and Heavy, a bit off the inside, but leads the way to the far turn by better than four. Lucky Kitten is second. The rest of the field, at least five or six behind him, led by favored Gregory Sun. Then Zitman, Extreme Justice, Perfect Tay, and still at the back is Smart Return as Hot and Heavy has gone hot and heavy, but he's still rolling along. Hot and Heavy might have bottomed out the group here through a 46 and three opening half mile. The nearest pursuer is Lucky Kitten, but he's been chasing hard from second. Extreme Justice is third. Nobody else is really running on. Here's Perfect Tay with a late punch, but Hot and Heavy's still there with legs to work with. Perfect Tay rolling, but time running out. Hot and Heavy has the lead by three. Perfect Tay's gonna make it close, but he's not gonna catch Hot and Heavy. Perfect Tay second, Lucky Kitten third, Extreme Justice fourth. Number five, hot and heavy, went hot and heavy early and rolled along up front, never facing a serious threat and going gate to wire under an enterprising ride from a Romero Ramsey who gets back-to-back -back scores today. Danny Gargan trained the son of Yes by Jiminy for Corm's racing stable. It was the veteran one, Perfect Tay, who got up for second ahead of the seven, Lucky Kitten, who ran third. Time for a commercial break. Still to come, the late pick four. We're back on the main track when we return right after this. Zipper is pulling away. Ghost Zapper blows them away with an eye-opening performance. Back now for race number six on the program, the start of the late pick four, one mile over the main track. Claimers in for $30,000. Field of seven signed on. Favorite with number three, Agujero. And they're off. The trust, trust, slow start there for Little Toe at the back. Good start for Cotton 2 with Big Fridge moving up down to the inside, and Agujero won't be far away. Far outside, it's Miyago, then KK's Revolver and King Wildcat, and after a slow getaway, Little Toe is last. Cotton 2 and Jackie Alvaro Donis have the lead out of the chute. They lead the way by a length. Rushing forward on the far outside is Little Toe, KK's Revolver and Miyago in that cluster, then Big Fridge. Agujero, who broke with the leaders, is second last. The trailer is King Wildcat as Cotton 2 gets a hassle-free lead again today. Cotton two down the backstretch with the lead a length and a quarter. Big Fridge second, KK's Revolver third. Will ask to quicken. Three wide out there is Miyago. Four wide out there is Little Toe. Then Agujero and King Wildcat. Past the half mile and moving to the far turn. With the lead, it's Cotton two up on the outside. Little Toe comes to call second. Parked at the rail third is Big Fridge. Miyago is asked to quicken, not doing it. Agujero, meanwhile, is put into the clear, but he's four wide. That'll sing King Wildcat five wide as they try to track down the speed of Cotton 2. Cotton 2 to the top of the stretch with the lead. Here comes Agujero, and here comes King Wildcat from the back. They're both getting uh, with to the top two from the back, and Miyago, then Big Fridge, and they're at the top of the stretch. The speed has been swallowed up by Agujero, who comes away with the lead. Agujero straightens for the drive on top. King Wildcat trying to right his course and get after him second. Back to third and Cotton 2, back to fourth, Little Toe. But in deep stretch, Agujero kicking away. Agujero and Jackie Miguel Vasquez will win it by at least three in the end. King Wildcat second, Cotton two third, fourth was Little Toe, then Miyago. Number three, Agujero set off a fairly contentious early pace, put into the clear by Miguel Vasquez rounding the far turn, and kicked on with it to get the victory for Antonio Sato. His barn appears to be heating up again. Miguel Vasquez rode the son of quality road to victory for the Magic Stables. One King Wildcat ran well to be second ahead of the five Cotton two, who finished third. We move now to the seventh race and the start of today's late pick three. We're on the turf at a mile and a 16th. Scratch the eight and nine, a field of seven. All eyes on number two, Uncle B. And they're off. The big favorite, Uncle B, blasts out to take the advantage. Up on the outside, Seuss and Naughty Bowie from up between horses. They try to back down the early speed. Colm 18 is next toward the rail. That's Archer Road, third last. Cut to order is second last, and the early trailer is Global Entry. 
Around the first turn they go. Naughty Bowie in the two path looks intent on getting to the lead. So Gaff Leone has to take the big favorite in hand and move to the outside with the second running Uncle B. Down at the inside and third is Archer Road. Fourth is Seuss. He's only two lengths off the lead. Then Come 18 ahead of Global Entry and cut to order is last. They exit the turn and straighten out for their journey down the backstretch. And with the advantage, it's still Naughty Bowie by a half a length. Uncle B on the press again, second through a 24 and two opening quarter speed. Archer Road is backed into a great spot for Jeffrey Sanchez, third behind the leader. From fourth is Seuss, a length better than Come 18, then Global Entry and cut to order. 49 and two for the opening half mile speed as they approach the half mile point. With the lead, Naughty Bowie by three parts of a length. Uncle B on the outside is second. Archer Road is at the rail third. Come 18 getting ready to go three wide. Now four wide as Seuss tries to move up as well ahead of Global Entry. And the trailer is cut to order. Less than three furlongs to go. And there goes the uncle. Uncle B onto the front now from Naughty Bowie who has to kick back second. Archer Road's going to come off the flank of the leader and tip into the clear for an opportunity. The rest will have to hurry up after three quarters. In 113 and two, they're at the top of the stretch. Uncle B confronted by Archer Road on the outside and Archer Road set down by Jeffrey Sanchez to put a neck in front. Uncle B trying to fight back second, three back to Naughty Bowie. Uncle B has a kick. Archer Road right back at him. Uncle B, Naughty Bowie, Archer Road, these two, Archer Road. What a horse race. Archer Road threw it down the challenge to Uncle B and ran him down in 142 and three. Tough beat if you bet number two, Uncle B in today's seventh race. Conversely, a great bet if you had number three, Archer Road. Archer Road got the benefit of a perfect ride from Jeffrey Sanchez, and the son of Loa de Senimo proves he's in career form as he knocks off Uncle B in the final 16th. Trainer Stanley Gold and owners and breeders, the Arendell Farm. Two, Uncle B got everything his own way. He was moved at the top of the stretch and just out kicked second out of the four naughty buoy who ran third. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm. From the breeding shed to the racetrack. In pursuit of producing the best. OBS June, the two-year-old source, OBS two-year-old sales grads win at the rate of two stakes a week. June sell graduate Stormy Liberal defeated the world's best in the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Another June sale grad, seeking the soul, captured the Grade 1 Clark Handicap. The OBS June sale is your final opportunity to acquire a promising two-year-old with stakes potential. Under TAC previews begin June 7th. OBS, we measure success by performance. Back now for race number eight on the program, the start of today's Late Daily Double and the Thursday feature, the Ocala Flame Overnight Stakes at six and a half furlongs. Field of six signed on, all eyes on number three, King Humor. Racing in the Ocala Flame. Not a good start for either favorite. Noble Drama steps slow and King Humor also, also off in a bit of traffic. But that's not going to stop King Humor from marching right to the front with Take Your Place right along Ta's side. And these two fly early. They've opened three on powerful Venezuela, who's out of their third. Fourth is Fafa, three clear of Noble Drama, who at least will have some pace to chase after a stutter step getaway. Grand King of Kings is last of all behind the two to five shot, King Humor. King Humor had to use his speed hard at the half mile pole as he went the opening quarter in 22 and one. And he leads by an neck over Take Your Place, who's giving him all he wants in second. It's a gap of five to powerful Venezuela in third, Fafa at the inside is fourth, Noble Drama fifth with better than eight lengths to raise, and the trailer remains Grand King of Kings with a now five sixteenths to go. King Humor has the lead to the top of the stretch, take your place in a more earnest position, set down driving second. Three back to powerful Venezuela who's going to try to parlay a tracking spot third. Swung to the center is Noble Drama from fourth, cut the corner next is Fafa with three sixteenths to go. King Humor has the lead, take your place second. On the outside, powerful Venezuela is third, Noble Drama on the far outside is coming on late in deep stretch. King Humor needs the wire. Here comes his barn buddy. Powerful Venezuela on the outside. Powerful Venezuela at King Humor. King Humor all heart and all class. King Humor took a licking and kept on ticking to win today's Ocala Flame from Powerful Venezuela. Second and 117 and one. What a great performance today from number three, King Humor. He's been so impressive in his three career outings. He gets the victory again today with the support of the public. He had to earn it, though, under Edgar Zayas, for trainer Victor Barboza, Jr., and the Hexor Investments Corporation. 
to the ninth and final race now. We had some rain before the ninth race, so we had to move the ninth race from the turf to the main track. Scratch the 1, 2, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Rider change on 14, attack zone to Jose Alvarez. Favorites were 3, Shim, and 6, Travi Boy. And they're off. Travi Boy like a bullet. Meanwhile, Shim took a funny step and unseated Gaffleon. So Shim is out of the race. The other favorite, Travi Boy, is on the lead. City Rock is second, Candy Max is third. Then, as it happens, in attack zone. They pass the half mile point and swing to the four turn. Travi Boy and Edgar Zayas with the advantage and in control by two and a half. Candy Max second, City Rock third. As it happens, too far back to make an impact. So is Attack Zone. So this race will be won or lost through the mind of Travi Boy. Travi Boy through a 22 and four opening quarter. He has his ears up. He's a quarter of a mile from the money and he still has daylight to work with. City Rock second, Candy Max third. They're both close enough if good enough. Then back to As It Happens in Attack Zone. Three sixteenths to run. Travi Boy. Off the turn, still by five. City Rock second, Candy Max third. Late run from attack zone, then as it happens. But this is all about Travi Boy. Eight to five is easy money. All aboard Travi Boy. He's a gate to wire winner by five in the end. Candy Max gets second, City Rock third, as it happens, fourth. And then attack zone. However, there'll be an inquiry looking at what Shim did leaving the gate. Once today's ninth race came off the turf, number six, Travi Boy was a standout on form, having just broke his maiden over a less than fast racetrack, which was sealed. Such is the conditions today, and the son of Jamologist cuts back no problem as he has a fast first gear. He goes gate to wire under Edgar Zayas for trainer Dave Fox and staying at the Lias stable, Fox Racing and MEB Racing. Number three, Shim, unseated the rider right after the start of the race. However, he caused his own problem, took a stutter step and dislodged Gaffleone have to wait for another day. With the late surface change, we had alls in the late pick four, the late pick five, and the rainbow six. That triggers a nice carryover in the rainbow six as we march forward to Belmont Eve and a Friday afternoon that begins at 2.15. And that's it, another nine race card in the books. The summit of speed preps we've had the last few days have been terrific. We'll look forward to that mega blockbuster card here at GP on Saturday, June the 30th. For now, it's on to a Twilight Friday, a first race post here tomorrow at 2.15 p.m. Do note, we have advanced wagering, full card wagering, advanced wagering, that is, on the Belmont Stakes Day program. And if you don't mind me, I'm going to slip into something a little more comfortable. I'll see you tomorrow right here on Thoroughbred Action. Hit the, hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack. I'm so tired.